In this video, we're going to talk about diversification and how it relates to common and independent risks. So let's say that you move to a small town on the Mississippi River. You're right up against the river. You got a nice little home in the town of Sulphur Springs. And let's just say in Sulphur Springs, there are a total of 100 homes altogether. And when you buy this home, the bank requires that you get insurance. So you go over to Tom's Insurance and there you get two types of insurance. You get flood insurance in case the Mississippi River floods and damages your home and you also get title insurance okay so let's just say that the risk of each of these catastrophes of happening let's say there's a two percent chance that there will be a flood that damages your home and a two percent chance that you will have some kind of problem with your title for those of you who haven't owned a home title insurance is basically the insurance that you buy in case after you've bought title to the home that somebody doesn't come later and say hey wait I actually have title to that home my great-grandfather gave it to me in his will so in any event these two types of risks are different in that flood insurance is a common risk right so this is common and when we say that something is a common risk, what we mean is that it's perfectly correlated. And you might be thinking, correlated with what? Well, remember that you have one home here, but there are 99 other homes in Sulphur Springs, right? And let's just assume that Tom's Insurance has insured all 100 of these homes. So from the perspective of Tom's Insurance, the risk of a loss due to flood is basically perfectly correlated because if you have flood damage probably the other 99 homes do as well because you all live in a tiny tight little uh, corner of town let's say all the homes are pretty much right up on top of each other you're right against the river and so if the Mississippi River floods all 100 homes are probably going to be flooded as well and so it's a common risk it's perfectly correlated if there's one payout that the insurance company has to make due to this flood it has to pay out all a hundred homes probably okay now title insurance is different right so title insurance is an independent risk it's not a common risk and that means that it's not correlated with other losses right so if you have some kind of problem with the title to your home that probably has nothing to do with the other 99 homes right it's just probably something unique to your home there was some kind of issue so that's an independent risk this is going to become relevant as we talk about diversification because ultimately what diversification does is it averages out independent risks but it doesn't it can't do anything about common risk and so let's get into an example it'll make it a little less abstract so let's say if we want to calculate the standard deviation of the chance of a claim right from the homeowner's perspective so from your perspective as a homeowner you can either have assuming you have flood insurance or title insurance you can either have nothing happen which will just categorize as zero or you could have a claim which will categorize as one right so it's just a binary option and so basically one of these things is going to happen and so now we know that there's a 98 percent chance that you won't have a claim and there's a two percent chance that you will have a claim right so now we can just calculate the standard deviation of a claim and the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance so all we're going to do is just just plug in some numbers here to calculate the standard deviation and so I'm just going to go through this quickly but we, we've got 0.98 so we've got 0.98 to represent the 98 percent chance right that you don't have any claim at all which would be zero if there's no claim minus 0 0.02 which is our expected value our mean right we expect that two percent of the time we'll have a claim okay and then we square that that's just part of the formula for a variance and then we're going to add to that we add to that the two percent chance that we do have a claim which would be the one right here right we have a claim that's one and then we subtract the average the expected value of 0 0.02 and then we square that so we add all that together and then we take the square root and that's going to give us 0.14 or 14 percent right so that's our standard deviation of our claim is 14 percent from the perspective of the homeowner right this is just you specifically with your home this would be the standard deviation and this is the same this is the same for same for the flood or title insurance right same for flood 
or title insurance. Either way, if we, if we go and we calculate exactly the same. Now let's take it from the perspective of the insurance company. Okay, so from Tom's insurance perspective, the standard deviation with the flood claim is going to be exactly the same as from the homeowner, homeowner perspective. It's going to be this 14%. So it's going to be calculated the exact same way. But it's going to be different when we come to the title insurance, right? The title insurance, instead of calculating the standard deviation, we're going to take something called the standard error, right? The standard error. And the standard error is basically the standard deviation, right? The standard deviation divided by the sample size and the square root of that sample size, right? So we've got 100 homes, right? We've got 100 homes. So we're going to take in the denominator the square root of 100, right? So that's going to be 10. And then in the numerator, we've got the standard deviation. And you might be wondering, why are we doing this? Why are we taking the standard error? Well, whenever the risks, whenever the risk, and in this case, the risk is of a title loss, right? Somebody coming in and saying, hey, wait, I actually have title to that house. And then they sue you and they get the, the house. And so then the insurance company, Tom's Insurance, has to pay you. They have to reimburse you for that, right? So that risk, when those risks are identical, which title, I mean, obviously a title loss for one home would be the same as another, right? An independent, independent, again, we're getting back to the idea that it's not correlated, right? So it's not like if you have some kind of problem with the title on your home, that the other 99 homes are also going to have some kind of problem, right? That's really unlikely, right? It's just going to be something unique to your home. So the risks are going to be independent. So when the risks are these, these two things, identical and independent, then we take the standard error. So basically all we're doing is take the standard deviation and we're scaling it by the root of the sample size, right? And so then that's going to give us 14% divided by the root of 100, square root of 100, which is 10. It's going to give us 1.4%. Now if you see, 1.4% is a lot lower than 14%, right? So there's going to be less risk. There's going to be less risk with the title claim, with the title insurance, than there is with the flood from the perspective of the insurance company, right? So less risk for insurer. Now, if, if it seems a little confusing to you, that just understand this is the value of diversification, right? This is the value of diversification. And the idea is that all the independent risks, right? So the independent risks, they kind of cancel out. So like, some years it might be the case where okay there was a title claim and the insurance company lost some money but 99 out of the other homes didn't have any problem at all or 98 didn't have any problem at all something like that right so the insurance company can kind of predict and say okay well look you know we're not going to have all kinds of problems in any given year with the title there'll be like one or two every year or something like that but with the flood when the flood happens all 100 homes hit or get hit right so it's like all or nothing so there is no averaging out, right? So if you think about it, basically diversification is the averaging out, the averaging out of the independent risks over time, right? That's what diversification is. Now, here's another way to think about it. If this isn't intuitive enough for you, think about it like this. The insurer, from the insurer's perspective, the amount of money that they would have to keep on hand to satisfy in terms of reserves, right? Insurance company have reserves. This is cash or resources they keep on hand in order to, to make a payout, right? If there's, uh, if there's a bunch of insurance claims in a given year, they need to make a payout. They're going to have to keep more reserves on hand for the flood insurance than they are for the title claim. Why? Because the, if a flood happens, right, on the off chance, on that 2% chance there is a flood, they need to be able to reimburse 100 people, right, or 100 homeowners, okay? They need to reimburse all 100 because the flood hits everybody. So they got to keep a lot of reserves on hand to be able to satisfy 100 claims, right? But with the title claims, it's like, okay, there's going to be one, two, three of them every year. It's not like all 100 are going to hit us at once. So you don't have to keep as many reserves on hand. But in any case, the way to think about it is, is just if you can remember 
that diversification is the averaging out of the independent risks, these, these risks that aren't correlated, they don't all happen at the same time, and so they, they average out, and it's actually less risky for the insurer to provide title insurance than it is for it to provide flood insurance.